when you arrived on Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Star, so you, you were working with uh, Jackie, Samo, Yunbyu, they are all, they know each other for forever and they were all part of their, their own stunt team when we are very used to work with each other. And then you come in and you are uh, completely new to this world. So is it difficult for you to integrate and to get respected when you are in this kind of new environment? The short answer is yes. <laughs> it's very difficult. Again, because Twinkle Twinkle was like my first Hong Kong movie. You know, when I'm on the plane, I'm going over there, as I sort of alluded to earlier, I kind of think, oh, I'll be able to do some of this, some of this fight style that I like to do. Well, as I said, when you get there, you realize that you don't get to do anything you want to do. You know, you're in their hands. And it's, it was difficult in the beginning because I'm still the only, virtually the only English speaking person on the set. You know, Sam I spoke some English, Jackie, you know, of course spoke some English, but still you're, you're really the outsider and you do have to prove yourself. Um, I think the biggest change for me is when I started doing the fight with Samo. And by the way, originally I was supposed to do a far bigger fight with Samo, uh, with Jackie, but he had injured his, under his shoulder blade on, a, on another movie, which limited what he wanted to do fight-wise. Otherwise, it would have been a bigger action scene with him. <laughs> The world is full of dead heroes. Don't be a hero. When I started fighting with, with uh, Samo, I, I believe that's when everything changed because, first of all, he, he, I, I used to train very, very hard. You know, I trained in kickboxing. You know, I was used to a hard style of contact. And Samo loved that I would do all my own falls. I would get knocked over tables. He could kick me as hard as he liked. And I would be okay with that. And also, he said to me, you have the timing. You know, everything with Jacko and Samo is about timing. Not so, more so than even like technical ability. It's whether you had the timing to be able to do this style of choreography. And I... I and by the way, not, not through me having any special skills. It just happened that because of my, whether it's goju training, whatever it was that my timing suited the choreography of a Samo Hong and a Jackie Chan, that I fit in with them. And Samo just had, he, he said to me, oh, you, you know, you're fantastic. He said he loved working with me. He used to take me to uh, editing sometimes and we'd only have a couple of hours off a day. Jackie took me shopping, you know, looking for cameras and things in the Hong Kong stores. So once, of course, the inner circle of the the stunt team saw how much Jackie and Samo liked me and respected me, then everything was good. Because then I'm like, I'm okay, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Because Samo, Samo respected me, Jackie respected me, so everything was good from then on. And, and again, it wasn't because I was being particularly nice, it was because for whatever reasons I was, and I, and, and I want to preface this by saying I know that I don't have any abilities that are outstanding. You know, I look at some of the martial artists today, like uh, Scott Atkins and people like that, and they're unbelievable with their abilities, but that's okay. You know, I did what I did, and for whatever reasons, it, it worked for Samo, worked for Jackie, and um, so it was a good experience that way. But, but it, did take, it did take doing the fight with Jackie to get the respect. In fact, you know, it was um, Shoji Karata, you know, Yazuki Karata, who's, who was famous in Hong Kong even then. I think he'd done like 40 movies. He was such an amazingly uh, a good martial artist, Japanese actor and martial artist. And after a couple of the first day or two of fighting with Samo, because the timing was different for me, the, the, even the way you throw a punch is different the way they want you to do it, you know, with uh, Samo's style and Jackie's style. He could see I was getting quite frustrated, you know, doing it over and over. And he took me aside <clears throat> and he said, Richard, he said, let me just give you a little bit of advice. If you want to do movies in Hong Kong, he said, first of all, 
they, and he's being respectful, they meaning the, the Hong Kong choreographers, they don't care what you do. They don't care what you want to do. It's what they want you to do. So don't say anything. Just do it as many times as they ask you to do. And, and that's the way you will get more work in Hong Kong. And I took that advice and it turned out to be very good advice because no matter how many takes it took or how hard I got hit or whatever, I would just be okay. I would do it over and over again. And I think that's how I earned the respect, you know, of a Sama Hong, which is not easy because he's tough, you know. He is he's tough on his, his team. He expects excellence out of them and you'll do it over and over until he gets that, that excellent shot that he wants. And if you're not up to that, you're not going to last in that industry. And certainly I feel very fortunate to be the only one to the Western to get asked back to do more than one movie back in those days with Jackie, you know, having ended up in three movies. And so I guess that's just through the advice that Shoji Kalata gave me. You know, I really appreciated his his advice having worked on Hong Kong movie sets for so long. Given that Samu was also acting, so he was acting, uh, fighting against you, uh, but he was also the director and everything on the choreographer. So I was wondering, was he completely in charge of all this choreographing and directing aspect or was he having a, a right-hand man, someone maybe like ko Yun or yun Byu, who would handle the, the behind the camera work? No. My experience was that Jackie was in charge, ah, Jackie, sorry, that Samo was in charge. I mean, when he was directing, he was watching everything. You know, and, and what you said is true on, on certain movies, like even um, when I did City Hunter, a lot of times you would get, again, a second action director or a third AD or whatever would kind of start directing the scene. But my experience, especially on Twinkle Twinkle and Stucky Stars, was Samo was the boss, you know, and everybody stood to attention. You know, if Sadman didn't like something and sort of started screaming, you know, you'd see everybody standing there going, oh, God, you know, what's going to happen now? And, and I remember watching a few times, I would go back to the monitor with Samo with an action part that maybe I wasn't involved in. And he would say, one more, one more. You know, that's all you used to hear was one more, one more. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, how many more times? But I would try and look at the monitor and try and figure out well, what is he after? I couldn't see almost any difference between each take. But ironically, whenever he got to the stage where he said, okay, let's move on, there was something in that take. Like he, he knew what he wanted, you know in a way that I didn't, I couldn't see it in that. But as I keep saying to you, you know, I have just such incredible respect for Samo. And, and you know, even on a set with Jackie's, you know, Yin Bill, Samo, Jackie, they were, you know, they were little brother, brother and big brother. Samo was big brother. So for me, Samo was one of the only ones that Jackie would bow down to on a set. You know, he was the boss and, that was kind of an interesting thing to see as well, even though, of course, they work beautifully together. But again, it's a long-winded way of saying, no, for me, Samo was always in charge. He was the one that would decide the shot that got used. And uh, he was in charge of the choreography, even though, again, you had a team of guys that would come up for ideas with choreography, but it was still Samo that, that drove that ship. I was told that he often said, uh, more power, or more power, or more power. Did, did you get that? Did he give you this kind of oh, yeah. as well? Always. It's a funny story that, that when Benny was, Benny Okites, who's, you know, I trained with Senza Benny for 30 plus years. When he went and did Meals on Meals, we were talking about that. He said he, he all he kept hearing, and I laughed because I, I know what he was meaning. He said he would do, he was sidekicking this particular stunt person and all he would hear was more power more power and he, he looked at them once he said what what do you mean more power he said do you mean you want me to screw up my face and he said he realized no they just meant he they wanted him to fold that stunt guy in half with a sidekick and he said okay that's what i do you know that's what i do best but yes i do remember that's that's the limiting english was more power or one more or you heard one more one more one more and 
you know, after you've been shooting 18 hours, you know, you almost want to put your hands on your ears because <laughs> you just wonder when it's going to end. But again, they set their movie and, and that's what they wanted, so you just had to do it. And you mentioned uh, Shoji Kurata, Yasaki Kurata. So you got to fight against him into, uh, in Shanghai Express. And from my understanding, the, the film was kind of getting rushed uh, because they had a, a release date, a Chinese New Year release date. And so they had to do multiple teams in order to manage to get the film delivered on time. So in your case, for your fight with Kurata, do you remember who was handling it? Was it Samo or was it Korayun or, or many, any others in charge for that part? No, look, again, it's hard for me to remember exactly, but I, I still believe it was Samo in charge, you know. Uh, you know, Yun Bill, you know, and I loved Yun Bill. I mean, he was such a, a, a kind soul, you know. He was such a nice man to work with, Yun Bill. And, of course, there would be input from them. But you've got to understand that I, I as again, as a Westerner, wasn't in on conversations, you know what I mean? Because it's Mandarin or Cantonese, whatever, and... So it's not like I can hear conversation. So I'm not, and Cynthia would have been the same. We wouldn't have been aware of whether they were short on time or they had to hurry things up. You're basically on the side there and they call you onto the set and show, they what, show you what they want you to do and then you do it. Does that make sense? Like if I was on an American set, of course I'd be aware of problems or running out of money or there's no time to shoot a scene and we have to compromise it. I just can't say if that was the case, I wouldn't have been aware of it anyway, you know? Okay. Uh, no I, you know, at, least, at least for me, having already done Magic Crystal, Twinkle Twinkle, Lucky Stars, you know, and all of that, at least I understood the way that films were made there. And by the way, that's the, that is the very reason that I got called back because of the advice, you know, Shoji Karate gave me, I wouldn't complain. I would just do what I was asked to do. I think I got asked back, not because I had unbelievable martial arts skills. Um, you know, I was adequate. I could do what I do. But I think it's because I understood how they made films. I had the timing. I would just shut up and basically go along for the ride. And I'm, Sam always said, you, you have very good comedic, timing as well like I understood that style of action for that style of movie and again it's not something that I trained at it just happened to be that that I had that particular ability that they liked you know and thankfully you know I mean to, to again to get to as I keep saying to get to work with the maestros of action movies you know of that day I mean it's something I still feel again very privileged to have been a part of and, it, and, you know, you see the contact. You talked about one of those sidekicks I got from, um, who was it? Um, Wang Chongli. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you cop those. You have to. You know, they don't, they don't sugarcoat that. Again, they knew that I was tough and I could take it. I've got to tell you, one of the, one of the hard things for me is that I had uh, done a movie in the Philippines, I think five, six weeks before, and I had got a lot of cuts on my legs and my knees, and I got, I didn't realize it, but when I got to Hong Kong, I was there for quite a while before I had to do my fight stuff uh, with uh, Karata and, and the boys, and my knee started swelling up. And you remember, I'm, it's crazy, but I'm dressed as a, a U.S. cavalry person, you know, with the boots on. And my uh, two days or a day before we had, I had to do that fight with Shoji Karata, my legs started swelling up. I mean, it got huge. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, why now? You know, I, I can't not do this fight when I've already been here a number of weeks. So I decided I was going to go ahead and do it. And there was one kick that you'll see that I throw. And by the way, when, when you kick, they want you to throw with full power. So when they block, they're not casually blocking. They have to block with the forearms and they want impact and, you know, a little bit of powder on the leg. I threw this kick and I nearly passed out, you know, and I, I sort of had to sit down and I pulled my boot off and my boot was all full of, 
pus and blood, you know, because I would got a staph infection that I didn't realize in my knee and it was all fluid and they had to take me again to get medical attention, get it all drained. That was a little bit of delay and on I went. But I, I still remember that. I, that first kick I threw, bam, you know, I hit. And I'm like, oh, my God, the pain was excruciating. But, again, part of, part of being an action person. <laughs> Painful. As cliche as it sounds, part of being a martial artist is that, you know, uh, you know, I, I was trained in a very hard style when, when I came through and you got, you learn, you learn to, to get a lot of mental fortitude, you know, and intent and everything else. And pain is part of what you do with your training. So I was able to go on with it. Thankfully, you know, it's not easy, but we, we were able to get through it. And I just think that to my actual martial arts instructors that, that brought me to where I was for that day. And again, look at, look at that film. I mean, even then I was aware, Yukata Yashima, you know, that was one of her first movies. I mean, it was an incredible cast, D-Way, Dick Way. I ended up getting D-Way to come to the Philippines and do a fight scene with me in a Filipino movie. And, and Yun Bill, I mean, you know, again, you're just working with such amazing people. And of course, you know, uh, Sammo Hong. So I think I would have withstood anything. There's no way I would have used any excuse to get out of continuing to be a part of, uh, of that sort of ensemble. So that's the free film you did in Hong Kong during the 80s. Then are you kept working for Hong Kong intermittently. But I was wondering if uh, during the 80s, during the time you were there, or even later, if you were asked by other Hong Kong uh, production to come uh, working for them? No, I did get offered one or two, but I think there were productions that I didn't know, so I did say no to them. I mean, you've got to understand, I was already very spoiled, you know, working with Samo and Jackie. And, and of course, even Wong Jing, you don't get bigger than that. So anything else would have sort of seemed like a, you know, something I wouldn't have probably been eager to do. I also understood that when I said yes, that this was going to be an incredibly hard thing to do. You know, after the first one, in fact, with City Hunter, I remember, you know, I got when they first offered me City Hunter, and I got that because of working, of course, in Magic Crystal with Wong Jing. He knew of my abilities. He wanted me to do it. And I actually, my agent said, oh, they want you to come, blah, blah, blah. I said, no. I basically said, it's not worth my health. <laughs> it's too hard, you know. And then even Jackie called, you know, and, and, and they really wanted me to do City Hunter, again, just because I'd already worked with them before and, so I eventually said yes, and, and that's how that sort of happened. So I, I, I'm not aware of getting off at a lot of movies other than that, but maybe I did. I know I did say no to a couple of productions, but they're the main ones I did. Okay, you also did for Golden Harvest the, the two China O'Brien, which were some attempts by the studio to kind of, of conquer the, the American market. And you got to work under the, the direction of uh, Robert Clues, the, the director of Hunter the Dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally, I'm quite critical of Robert Clues as an action director, but I would like to have your own take on that. Do you think he was, he was good for such a project? Yes, I do. I do. And I, I'm, I really like, you know, Bob Klaus. Um, what can I tell you? He was very kind to me. You know, I did China O'Brien, you know, um, Jim Carter movie, Force 5. You know, I did a number of movies with Bob Klaus. Of course, I had respect for him due to him being the director of Enter the Dragon. I guess what you've got to say is if you're, uh, if you're a fan of Hong Kong movies, you're probably not going to like a Bob Klaus because he's, a, he's an American director. They have a very different style. The fights aren't the most important thing in the movie for them. It's more the drama and the story. So they don't understand how to film fights in the most intricate way that a Hong Kong director would. It's, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a very different style. You know, again, 
with a Bob Klaus, you will, like most American directors, you will shoot a master scene and then you'll go in and do coverage. With the Hong Kong directors, it's very spontaneous. It's very alive in that even when I was working on Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars, we would shoot a certain amount of days and then someone would go and do a, would do a quick edit and that's when he would figure out how much longer he wanted the fight to be, which direction to take the fight in. Same with City Hunter, even with, with Wong Jing. You know, it, it was allowed with Jackie to, to sort of just grow on its own as opposed to being locked into a master. And that was just a style of, of direction. I, I think for an American movie, Bob was totally adequate. You know, he... Um, you know, he, he, he got his real attention with one of the uh, earlier movies, Darker Than Amber. I'm not sure you know that. That movie got critical acclaim, which, you know, established him as a director. But again, Darker Than Amber is a drama. You know, it's not so much about action. But having said that, Bob got to do quite a number of action movies. I think he did um, The Big Brawl with Jackie Chan. This is The Big Brawl. You know, I think he did what he did. I, I, I've heard criticism of Bob too, but, but it wouldn't come from me. You know, I, I just enjoyed working with him. But again, I understand it's a very different style of directing, you know, that nobody in Hong Kong would be happy with. <laughs> and if you loved Hong Kong movies, they wouldn't be that happy with it. He, you know, even if you look at End of the Dragon, a lot of that was very much pull the camera back, which I like, by the way. It allowed someone like Bruce Lee, it allowed you to see the ballet and the artistry of someone like Bruce Lee, to see a kick, where it started from, the whole trajectory of it. Yes, you would do inserts and coverage, but it was almost like watching a live theater show where you're, you're allowed to watch a wide shot and see how good the performers were. Um, probably that didn't happen as much again with somebody like Bob, but again, it's, it's just a different style. I also want to say to you that one of the big reasons that the fights that you talk about with the Bob Klaus, whether it's China O'Brien or Jim Carter or Force 5 is you don't have the time, you know? This, is the, this would be the biggest causation of how good or not it is, is, is if I go back to what I said about Jackie, he understood that Back then, his audience weren't interested in talking heads. They wanted to see the fights. And sometimes the fights would go on for 10 minutes, but they were, they were unreal, you know, but that's what the audience just wanted. And they would put the priority of budget and time into those fights. You know, this is why even in, in Mr. Nice Guy, you don't see long fights in there because the budget wouldn't allow, you know, it was a different working environment. So... You know, a fight that Bob Klaus might spend a day on, they would spend two weeks on in Hong Kong. And when you spend two weeks as opposed to a day, of course you have time to go over and over it and to have very intricate choreography, you know, because you have the time to put it on camera. So I would also say that's another reason why there's a very different look to an action scene in a Western movie because they just didn't prioritise the action the same way that the Hong Kong uh, movie makers did. Yeah, you, you make a very good point for sure. Uh, on, on City Hunter, I was wondering uh, who was in charge of, of the direction because Jackie is, uh, is, was a big shot uh, and he liked to control things. Uh, and Wong Jing is a bit more laid back in a way as a director. So, yeah. But still, we can see that the film has a lot of Wong Jing comedy and stuff. So I was wondering who was really in charge when you were on the set, as much as you can say, of course. Yeah, it was mainly Jackie and, of course, his stunt team. They all had input. You know, as I said, there were different directors for certain parts of action, especially if Jackie was involved in it. But still on that film, as far as the action, Jackie was the action director. He's the one that would always tell me what he wanted, you know, how he wanted it. And uh, so he was in charge. You know, Wong Jing, of course, would take care of a lot of the comedic elements. And as you pointed out, this film, you know, even for Jack, he said it was a bit of a risk for him. He was appealing to a younger audience. <laughs> Ah! 
you know, with that style of filmmaking. It wasn't a very typical Jackie movie, but it was a very typical Wong Jing movie. So, you know, Wong Jing was in charge of that part of it. You know, there was, again, humour that you would not normally see even in a Jackie Chan movie. Ja Jackie's humour was more in the fights, um, if you remember. You know, I, I read a re interesting review about Jackie, which I, I really put a smile on my face. He was talking about a fight scene that Jackie was doing. And this, it was a New York um, gentleman, you know, giving critique and he said watching Jackie is like watching a speeding bullet in reverse meaning it was it was a little bit like Jackie always trying to avoid fighting whereby he would beat the antagonist he was never the hero that would just barge headlong in and a lot of that for those who don't know came from Jackie's love of silent movies Jackie had every Buster Keaton Three Stooges you know Charlie Chaplin movie and that's where he got a lot of ideas for a lot of the gags in his movies. And if you remember Charlie Chaplin, it was more about him trying to get away from the big burly bad guy who looked a bit like my character in Magic Crystal chasing him. And he would use ladders and umbrellas and he would try and get away. But in the process of getting away, he would end up beating up the bad guy. And that was, that was kind of how it worked, you know, with, with Jackie. <laughs> so, City Hunter again. I think the fights. Yes. No. Well, I mean, look at the look at the comedy in there. But that was, I believe, maybe that came from Wong Jing. You know, with with the tears appearing and he wiped the tears away. And you know, that was again, it was taken to a younger audience than than even Jackie would go. But but I, it was fun. You know, it kind of worked. I remember when I first saw it because I don't get to see unless I'm in the scene. I don't get to see most of what's being shot. You know, we shot some of that in Hong in Tokyo Harbor on the ship. All the exteriors of City Hunter were shipped on a cruise ship. Half of the cruise ship were filled with schoolgirls that loved Jackie fan club, and half the ship was for us shooting, which is pretty funny. But you don't get to see it. It's only when I got to see a screening. I think, uh, in fact, I think at the um, American Film Festival in Los Angeles that I got to see it and. I was just laughing. I was like, oh, my God, look at this, you know, because I, I had no idea what the finished product would look like, you know, and uh, that was a lot of fun. But... And as a choreographer, do you, did you notice a, a, a difference of style compared to Jackie, compared to Sadmo to Jackie or, or Jackie to Tony Lang Siung? Was there... Uh, a different identity in his choreography compared to them? I, I don't think Jackie's style is as hard. You know, Sam was very much about if you're going to make contact, he wanted you to make very hard contact. You know, not, he, as I said, I mean, I even got hit with bare fisted uppercuts in Twinkle Truck and Lucky Stars from Sam I didn't see that from Jackie, was of course tough, you know and strong and everything, but a different style. You know, like when you shape up with Samo, you, even though it's a movie, you can tell whether somebody can really punch or really kick. And I really knew with Samo, I said, oh man, this guy can really punch, you know? And he had a, a turning back kick that was as good as anybody, you know, if he hit you with it. I think Jackie's style was a little different, but, but not, there's still, it still was Hong Kong style choreography, you know, it wasn't that different. It's just that like I would choreograph something that a partner of mine, we would do the same choreography. It would be slightly different just because of our personalities and everything else. And so I, I, that's all I feel. I'm probably not answering that very well, but they were different, but the same, you know, the style of shooting was the same because they would of course learn from each other moving the camera, always different camera place, but that's how they created energy within the fight, as opposed, as I said, to pulling back and just letting it play out. But it's City Hunter, you know, if you, if you notice, you know, I'm using like a stream of sticks and even that they didn't want me to look very efficient. You know, I, I almost was asked to look like a mad professor. There's a couple of shots where I'm beating and Jackie's like blocking and I'm just like, I'm just wailing away. There was no real technique to that, but they particularly didn't want it. So, again, it's it's probably the comedic style that they, they were after for City Hunter. 
And yet there were serious things. You know, you look at like the fight that Gary did. I remember Gary Daniels, you know, when he was up on, he's up in the air and he's got a sidekick out and spinning. Well, that, they got a double to do that, that part of the fight. I remember uh, Gary said to me, he said, oh, why are they doubling me? You know, I, and because I already knew that style of, and how they work, I said, just, it's okay, you know, let them do it. You'll probably be happy that it's a double. Well, as it turned out, to get that particular position, they had a, a metal frame, you know, at right angles, and they got a stunt double for Gary, and they actually strapped his legs to the frame, pull him up on a wire, and that scene... I, I remember that went on for hours and when they finally let the stunt man down and took him off, they took him to hospital because it's like his legs wouldn't move. It was almost like he was frozen because he couldn't move. It would have been all cramped up, the blood supply and everything else. And I remember saying to Gary, I said, Steve, aren't you happy you weren't the one up and up there doing that? You know, there were times you were like, phew, thank God it's somebody else doing it. <laughs> But even talking about doubles there, you remember, like, um, um, who is it? Sorry, that you, you know a famous one of Jackie's stunt uh, people. Ken Lu, uh, Ken Lu, Lo Wai Kuang. Uh, is it Miles or uh, Mars? Mars. Mars. Yeah, sorry, Mars. 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 Yeah. Well, he, you know, he doubled me a couple of times, and I remember even saying this. Yeah, hey, look. I said, all you've done is put a little bit of silver paint in the back of his hair and now he's my double, you know? And they just laughed. And that, that was the time, as I told you, that Jackie said, look, that's when the actual team get to make some extra money is when they double one of us. And that's why they did it, because I could, could have done all of that action, you know? But anyway, it's the way it goes. Uh, and you got to work again with Jackie and Sambo, as you said, on Mr. Nice Guy, which is your, your last collaboration with them. Uh, mm -hmm. At that point of uh, Samo's career, he was a bit on the on the downside. Uh, so I was wondering if you if you saw uh, an evolution in his style and in the way he was working with Jackie compared to Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Star. Was their relationship a bit more strained, or was he a, a bit more under pressure compared to what you had seen on the the previous film you did with them together? Not that I'm aware of, I know, you know, I, I wouldn't anyway be aware of, again, because if they were corresponding, it would be again in, in Cantonese or Mandarin. And so I wasn't aware of any strain that way. I think the, the stress and the strain for Samo is the fact that we were shooting in Australia, that you couldn't just do hours and hours of overtime. See, again, as I said, in, in Hong Kong, you could shoot around the clock 24 hours a day there was no overtime there were no re there were no sort of uh, awards for stunts like they do in american movies if you do a high fall you get extra money none of that applied it was just as many hours as it took so cut to shooting an action movie hong uh, samo action movie in australia they realized that the budget wouldn't allow. And I believe if there was stress, that's why it was there. And, and as I get back to what I said earlier in the interview, uh, there was supposed to be quite an extended fight. Because think of John Carlo, you know, I'm this bad guy. I get to tie Jackie up with bands and everything, which is very comedic. And I'm just a wise guy, you know. And I think everybody wanted to see John Carlo get his ass kicked by Jackie at the end of the movie. I did. You know, I thought, wait a minute, why are you using me? But they completely ran out of time. There were two or three months already over time and budget, which again, unlike Hong Kong, you paid for. Um, so that's, that. if there was stress, I believe that's why there would have been stress. I mean, even, even the mining truck, I, I laugh because it was to some ways through the movie that they hadn't even figured out what they would do with the mining truck. You know, that whole house that was destroyed by that huge mining truck was built from scratch. I mean, it was built for uh, very specific specifications so the truck could get through certain aspects and destroy And I was told it's just that Jackie had an idea that he just wanted to destroy something with one of these big mining trucks. So that became part of the plot and they just figured out how to make that relevant to the story, which is pretty funny.